for tapes of end-time meetings, deliverance services, or Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, writes Post Office Box 21516, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Sunday morning, November 29, 1987. Thanksgiving weekend teaching and deliverance camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. This is the final service of the meetings. Tommy Cook of Tulsa, Oklahoma, is the speaker of the morning. For this day, Lord, we thank you that heaven is real. We thank you there are people there today. And there are people leaving this earth today to go there. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you mainly for Jesus who made the provision. We love you today, Lord. We thank you and we bless you for your people. We thank you for the presence of God in this service today, Lord your anointing, your victory, your power. And Lord, as we share your word, open our hearts to receive it today. We bless your people again. Give us a receptive heart and a teachable spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I want to give you two scriptures today, starting off. Turn to Malachi, fourth chapter. And um, I think there's a lot of things going to happen in the near future. We don't realize what's going to happen. Um, I mean, oh, God's got some surprises for all of us. In Malachi 4, verse 5, the Lord says to us, Behold, I will send you Elijah. Now, I believe there is, as I said the other day, there is an Elijah army being raised up, the Spirit of God upon them, double portion ministry. But I don't rule out that Elijah won't come either and be here. Because I believe there's going to be some of the old patriarchs and prophets probably walking the earth here and doing some things. And he said, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he, this Elijah ministry, shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. That's natural in the home, fathers and children, but it's also spiritual too. How many know there's some, how many know there's some spiritual fathers need to turn back to the sheep, Amen. to the lambs? And the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Although the other, uh, what I'm trying to say is this last part here. If Elijah does not come, if this minister is not raised up, the earth will be destroyed. I mean, no curses bring destruction. But God said Elijah will come before that time. Now turn to the book of Revelation and chapter 10. And this, this is a tremendous chapter in the book of Revelation, but I'm not going to go into it. But look at the last verse. Now, John, how many know John was the son of thunder? And there were some thunders <laughs> uttered a voice right here, chapter 10. And John is a type of the remnant God's raising up. But in verse 11, notice though what the Lord says about John here. And he said to me, Thou must, how many believe you must be born again? How many believe you must through much tribulation enter the kingdom? And God says here, thou must prophesy again, John, before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. So we can't rule out that John won't be here, can we, during that? Hello? Amen. Now, I want to read a vision a person had. It's not important who the person is, but I just want to read it to you before we go into some more scriptures. This person had a vision several years ago. I saw a great group of people caught up behind the veil. And I know I knew when I was seeing it that it was not, now, now hear what I'm saying, the rapture of the church. And the Spirit said, I am taking them, and this is the, the, the uh, first fruits here I believe she's talking about. I am taking them up to the same place that I took the Apostle Paul. I mean, no, Paul was caught up to the third heaven. Paradise. He, she said, this vision said, I'm taking them up to the same place that I took the Apostle Paul when he saw and heard things that were never allowed to be expressed fully. And this is why Peter said he speaks some things hard to, to understand and some rest or twist them to their own destruction. 
And when they were caught up, I saw faces of others pressing through from behind the veil. And the Spirit said, These the faces pressing through are the spirits of just men made perfect, who are pressing through the veil for their resurrection. This caught up group returned to the earth. That's the man child people. To the earth, and the saints who were made perfect, waiting for resurrection, were resurrected. The two groups became one group and came back to the earth. And the Spirit said, God said, These are my full grown sons. They have access to both sides of the veil. That's this side. There will be a group of people who will not taste of death, but will walk out of time into eternity and will set up the visible earthly kingdom of Christ. I saw a dark valley and I saw the church in it. That's, what's, that's where the church is heading, uh, I believe, just in the near future. And these two groups, notice, two groups, were caught up overcomers and the resurrected saints, which became one, went ministering to them, as to that church in that dark valley, lifting up feeble hands, strengthening and lifting up weary bodies. And he said, These are my full-grown sons who have received a double portion of my Father's inheritance, and it's part of their duty to supply the needs of the rest of the family of God. And they, God said, are preparing the rest of my body for my visible appearance. They are ministering to the rest of my body until it shall come to a place where I can come and set up my visible kingdom. Hallelujah. End of vision. I believe there is a people God is going to catch up, as we said last night. Turn with me, if you will, to Revelation chapter uh, 3. Revelation chapter 3. Now, there is a teaching that I, I'm going to for long get involved with when I have time and get before the Lord. And it's to teach the seven parables of Matthew 13 with the seven churches in Revelation 2 and 3 and the seven parts of the feast. There were three feasts, but seven parts. And so I want, to, I want to make a study and a teaching of that when the Lord lets me do that. But here in chapter 3, verse 7, and here we deal, and I'm not going to go into the parable of Matthew 13, but it's the parable of the pearl in Matthew 13, the sixth parable. And Philadelphia is the sixth church. How many know that's true? And the sixth feast, or the sixth part of the feast, would be the Day of Atonement. Well, how many know on the Day of Atonement, there was a high priest that went through the veil once a year? And this is a type of God's people going through the veil as well. Praise the Lord. I mean, our high priest has entered in there, to, and he's there today. He's, made a, he's the forerunner. He's made a way for you and I to come in. Hallelujah. And so here in chapter 3, verse 7, to the angel of the church... In Philadelphia. I believe Philadelphia is a type of the overcomers, of all the churches. Jesus did not tell this church to repent here. I mean, oh, most of the others, he told them to repent. But he, you'll not find it here in this scripture, speaking of Philadelphia. And so I believe it's a perfect example of many overcomers. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, what a message there is in that. He that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. Verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not de denied my name. Verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, or Christians, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. How I many know he loves us? Verse 10, because thou hast kept, here he's tell, telling this church, this sixth church, this, La, this uh, Philadelphia church, <clears throat> because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will keep you or preserve you from the hour of temptation. Notice, which shall come upon all the world. Now, Luke 21, we saw last night, that it was coming upon all the world as a snare or as a trap. 
And the Lord promises this church that they would be kept and preserved in that hour. And I believe they are, again, they are a type of the overcomers. And I believe they're, uh, the overcomers are going to be kept and preserved, praise the Lord, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Praise the Lord. So, and notice in verse 12, here's a triple ceiling to this church. If you'll notice here. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. That's the overcomers. He shall go no more out. I will write, number one, upon him the name of the nature of my God. Number two, the name of the, of the city of my God. And then the last part of it, God says, I will write upon him my new name. My new name. Which is a triple ceiling. Praise the Lord. To this church in Philadelphia. Now turn back to Leviticus chapter 16. <clears throat> Leviticus 16, and look at verse 12. This is when the high priest would go in through the veil. And he shall take a censer, <clears throat> chapter 16, verse 12, he shall take a censer full of burning coal. I mean, oh, God wants us to be hot Christians, too. From off the altar, God's altar, before the Lord... And his hands, notice not just hand, but hand, full of sweet incense, which is a type of prayer, worship, and intercession. His hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. Now, the double uh, incense, hands full of incense, speaks of the double portion. And I believe to enter into the Holy of Holies, we've got to learn to praise, to worship, to intercede. And seek our God. Amen? And we know the last piece of furniture before we would enter the, the, the Holy of Holies, there at the veil, was a golden altar of incense. And once a year, that golden altar of incense was taken behind the veil, you see, by the priest and put there. Once a year. And so, the last piece of furniture in the holy place. So to enter into the Holy of Holies is going to take worship, it's going to take prayer, it's going to take intercession on our part that's going to help us enter on into that place in God. And so both hands full of sweet incense, beaten small. Verse 13, And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony Look at this, that he die not, that he die not. So if he wanted to spare death, what did he have to do? He had to follow instructions, didn't he? He had to come God's way. And the, I tell you, there is a people that's going to follow God's way. There is a people going to enter in uh, through worship and praise of their Creator. Hallelujah. They're going to take the double hands full in. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I believe that double hands full represent. A double portion, two portions, uh, the left and the right hand. Praise the Lord. Now turn to Zechariah 4. <clears throat> Zechariah 4. Now we said last night there were two groups. And we said a while ago that the sixth parable of Matthew 13, the sixth church of Philadelphia, and the sixth part of the feast was the Day of Atonement when the priest went through the veil. But how many know there was also a seventh church? Namely, Laodicea. Huh? And the seventh feast is tabernacles. You see, tabernacles has three parts. Trumpets, atonement, and, of course, tabernacles. Now, and then, and then in that seventh uh, parable, Matthew 13, that's where the net was thrown out and was brought in many fish. Remember that parable? And I believe the harvest is coming in. Praise the Lord. It's the people walking through the veil... In the sixth parable, in the sixth church, but then the seventh, the harvest also is coming, the general harvest. That's what we talked about last time a little bit. Now, here in Zechariah, is that where I told you to go? Zechariah chapter um, 4. Zechariah 4. Look in verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Notice the word to this man. 
saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit. So you got the Word, and you got what? The Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts, or the anointed Word. Now, verse 10, he talks about the seven eyes here, which are the seven spirits of God, that go throughout the whole earth. <clears throat> In verse 11, Then I answered I and said to him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? Now, the candlestick represents the church. And yet, this prophet saw a tree on the left side and one on the right side. Olive trees. I mean, out of olive trees, you get olive oil, which is a tithe of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And so here are two standing on both sides of the candlestick. In verse 12, he said, I answered again and said to him, What be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? I mean, gold, the golden oil speaks of that nature of Christ flowing into the church. But you can't empty yourself unless you have it in you, can you? But they're emptying this golden oil. Notice, it, you see, there are two golden pipes here. It's golden oil, and we know it's a golden candlestick. Hallelujah. And how many know the candlestick? There was no measurements to the candlestick. You cannot measure the Holy Spirit. Candlestick represents the Holy Spirit, too. Now, it says in verse 13, He answered me and said, Knowest thou not... What these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Well, how many of you stand by the Lord? How many know you're going to know of His presence? You're going to know of His holiness? You're going to know of His love? So forth. Now, it says they stood by the Lord of the whole earth. They're standing. You know why they're standing here? They're not in fleshly and religious activity, but they're waiting on the orders of God to move. How many believe God's raising a people up that refuse to do anything out of themselves? I mean, they're coming to that place. I'm not saying we're fully there, but I'm saying we're, there is a people arising that do not desire to do things out of themselves. And I believe God is raising up eunuchs, spiritual eunuchs, that will not and cannot reproduce out of themselves only by the Holy Ghost. And I believe this is a double portion ministry here. I believe it's more than two men. I believe it's two companies. Or call it what you want to. But nevertheless, it is the double portion ministry. It is the Spirit and the Word in a people. But through other scriptures, it speaks of the two olive trees, two olive branches as well as right here. It speaks of the double portion ministry. It speaks of the two witnesses, the two prophets, the Spirit and the Word ministry in a people. Or uh, the Hebrew here calls it the sons of oil. Sons full of oil. Hallelujah. So God has a people going to come forth in this ministry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, let's go a little further here, if we can. Turn with me uh, to Genesis 48. Genesis 48. <clears throat> I believe it's Genesis 48. <clears throat> Genesis 48. And look in verse 21. Uh, and Israel, this is Joseph's father, which was named Jacob. But his name was, nature was changed to Israel. Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above. So one portion above, what he had makes what? Makes two, double portion. He said, I've given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. Praise the Lord. How many of these had the Pentecostal experience, baptism of the Holy Ghost? How many know Pentecost means 50? How many know that's half a hundred? Huh? We call it full gospel, but it's not full gospel. It's really two-thirds gospel. But God is bringing the people into His fullness, into the uh, hundredfold. 
And there's many approaching that direction. They're not there, but they're on their way. You know, trumpets, in, in the last feast, trumpets blew on the first day of the seventh month. And I believe God's trumpets are blowing today, don't you? God's uh, message is coming forth. Until we reach the seventh trumpet, Paul said we'll be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Not just when the trumpet sounds, but when the last trumpet sounds. And the last trumpet represents the seven trumpets in Revelation. How I many know in Joshua, they marched around the city every day for six days, and nothing happened. And they had to march around keeping their mouth shut. How I many know that was really a miracle? Amen. Amen? Three million of them. <laughs> I mean, that's a miracle, wasn't it, brother? Miller? But on the seventh day, they marched seven times, which is God's number. They marched seven times. There were seven priests blowing seven trumpets. And when they finished their journey, I mean, oh, they shouted and the walls came down. During six days, they had marched 30 miles around the city and nothing had happened. But on the seventh day, they went an extra five miles. They marched 35 miles. The trumpets blew. They shouted. And, brother, the, the walls came down and they defeated the enemy. Praise the Lord. I mean, oh, we're in the sixth day, enter, entering closely to the seventh day. And we've seen a few results. But I'll tell you, there's more going to happen in that seventh day approaching than what's happened in the past 6,000 years or six days. Amen. Amen? Praise the Lord. So, trumpets was on the first day of the seventh month. And then the Day of Atonement was on the tenth day of the seventh month. And that's ten days. Ten speaks of tribulations. It speaks of trials. You can see that in the book of Revelation. And in the book of Daniel, they were tested ten days. And so, to come from trumpets to atonement, there is testing time, isn't there? Are you hearing me? And I said, the high priest went in on the Day of Atonement into the Holy of Holies. Let me say it this way. There is a people in the wilderness now coming out. But there's another people getting ready to go in. I'd rather be that one that's getting ready to come out, hallelujah, than those getting ready to go in. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Thank God. We better pray for those, though, that's getting ready to go in. And we better pray that we make it on out. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. And from the tenth day to the fifteenth day, which was tabernacles, that's five days. Five is the number of grace. And how many know God's grace is going to bring the people in to the fullness of tabernacles? And five is the number of the ministry. And we'll all be perfected under the apostles, prophets, teachers, and shepherds, and evangelists by the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So there is a people moving towards the Holy of Holies. As one brother said one time, we're on the back 40. Hmm. 60 to 100 is what? 40. We're on the back 40 going west with a hammer down. Well, I hope so. <laughs> hope the hammer's not on us. Sometimes I feel like it is, don't you? Now turn to 1 John chapter 2. <laughs> 1 John chapter 2. But we, we, we must not get discouraged. Amen? And we need to hold each other up. You know, none of us have all the truth. We have a portion of truth. But I'll tell you, we may not, not, not have all the truth, but we can have a love for the truth. And if we have a love for the truth, He'll lead us and guide us into truth. If we have an open heart, teachable mind, God can teach us. Praise the Lord. And chapter 2 of John, I believe there's some real overcoming that must be done before we come on into that higher realm in God where the Lord wants us. But in 1 John chapter 2, look in verse um, 12. John said, I write to you little children, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for His name's sake. Hallelujah. I'm just glad you're forgiven today. Amen. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Amen? Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Now, and this speaks of another scripture in the Old Testament, being a bud. We're buds. How I many you know the life of God comes into you when you become a child of God? Now, it says here, also, in verse 13, I write to you, fathers, because you've known him, that is, from the beginning, I write to you, young men. 
Now, that shows about 40 years of age, young men. How many are approaching about 40 here? Anybody? Got a few. Mary, I'll get your hand down. <laughs> huh? Twice. Oh, twice. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well, how many, know, how many know 40 is a testing word, too? And he said, here, I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. Now, we don't wait till we get to the Holy of Holies to overcome the wicked one, do we? We're learning to overcome now in the holy place or in the outer court, wherever you are. We're learning to overcome now, but especially in the holy place, the school of the Spirit. You know, many don't want to go through the school of the Spirit. They want to bypass it. They don't want to speak in tongues, cast out devils, and prophesy. But I want to tell you, you've got to go through that realm to come on into this fullness. Amen? And I know there are many claim they're there, but I don't think they really are. Amen? I know there's a fullness. I know there's a... A realm beyond even the gifts of the Spirit, but I haven't got there yet, praise God, and I don't think it, too many that I know of have got there. And we're going to have to use and exercise the gifts of the Spirit till we can come to that place, into that fullness, praise the Lord, as a people. And so, it says here, it says right here, I, I write to you, young men, because you've overcome the wicked one, Satan. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father... I write, I've written to you, fathers, because you've known him from the beginning. I've written to you, young men, because you're strong. Look at this. And the word of God abides in you. You've overcome the wicked one. So here's the 36th principle here. Children, young men, and fathers. So thank God, children are forgiven. Young men have learned to overcome the wicked one. But how many believe we need some fathers in the church? And in the homes, we need some mothers in the homes and in the church. Amen. Spiritual fathers, spiritual mothers. We need some Apostle Pauls. We need some Miriams to watch over baby Moses. Praise the Lord. Now, what I see here in this uh, outer court, holy place, and holy of holies teaching, I see three things here because we're dealing, remember, with, with the children, young men, and fathers. I see forgiveness, fortification, it's overcoming, and fatherhood. Now, Paul said, though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, in Christ, you don't have many fathers. Frank and I, Brother Frank Adams and I, went to a Bible college in Tulsa, and we had a spiritual father we loved very much. His name was Brother Duncan. And I thank God for that man. Praise the Lord. And other men we've got to sit under, you know, through the years. And I believe God in this hour is raising up some spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers. Amen. And so, there are, there are those fathers he is raising up in the church. You know, I've said this before. There are workers in the outer court. There are warriors in the holy place. But God is bringing the people to be worshipers in the holy of holies. Amen? And that's that double incense, that double portion we were talking about a while ago. And so, we see there's a people going to enter in. Now, <clears throat> turn with me. To Kings, chapter two of Second Kings. But in Second Kings, chapter two, how I many know Elijah is going to be taken up? Now Elijah, as we said the other day, was living in a time of Ahab and Jezebel. We said that Ahab was a type of the beast system, of the political system of the world, world system. Call it what you want to. Jezebel was. <clears throat> It's a type of the harlot system. I mean, oh, she was riding the beast in Revelation 17. She was in charge. She was in control for a period of time. And it was Jezebel that incited and stirred up the trouble uh, in the kingdom of Ahab. And I mean, oh, because of her witchcraft and her seducements, it brought judgment on, the ki on, the, on the Ahab's kingdom and upon the home. Jezebel, Jezebel will bring judgment upon the home, upon the church. The touch of Jezebel is a curse. Jezebel goes for the juggler vein, brother. She's out to destroy. She's very religious. And she's after the inheritance. Naboth wouldn't give it to Ahab. And he'd begin to pout. And she said, I'll get it for you. And she got it. And that Jezebel, it's the same spirit as the queen of heaven. 
It's the same spirit as worshiping Mary. It's the same spirit of, as the heart in Revelation 17. It's the same spirit of, as Diana of the Ephesians in chapter 19 of Acts. It's all together. Different name, same spirit. And wherever you have a church that has a strong prophetic word, you have to be careful because Jezebel wants to come in in the midst of it. And Jezebel wants to be the head of things. She wants to be in the forefront. She wants preeminence. And she'll take it if she can get it. Hallelujah. Now, true prophets do not seek people out. They wear them out. But Jezebel seeks the people out. Amen? Now, Jesus... Well, let's go to Revelation. I'll get back in just a second. Turn to Revelation 2. Revelation 2. Now, let me say, Jezebel is not only in women, it's in men too. A controlling spirit can be in men just as it can be in women. And I think, first of all, we need to look in, in us individually, ourselves, before we point a finger at anybody else. Thank God, show me the Jezebel in me, show me the Ahab in me, show me the Absalom in me. And, and so in chapter 2, in verse 20, this church at Thyatira, God said in verse 20 to this church, now he's speaking to the church, and what we see back here in the church, we see today in the church. Amen? The Lord's warning us. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, church, because thou suffers that woman Jezebel, which calleth, notice, herself a prophetess. How many know real prophets don't go around bragging on themselves? They brag on the prophet, Jesus. Notice, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. That can be uh, spiritual fornication as well as natural. And to eat being sacrificed to idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication. God said she repented not. Now look at this. Behold, I will cast her into a bed. Now, we're in bed with Jesus, and that's Scripture in the book of Luke. Or we're in bed with the harlot or the world. And he said, I'm going to cast her into bed. And when them that commit adultery with her is going to go into what? Can I tell you that many are heading that way because they're connected with Jezebel now. Except they repent of their deeds. Now, this is what God said. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts. I will give to every one of you according to your works. But to you I say, and to the rest in Thyatira. As many, look at this, as have not this doctrine, this teaching, which have not known the depths of Satan. Jezebel is a depth of Satan. As they speak, I will put upon you none other burdens. Hallelujah. The Jezebel doctrine is a depth of Satan. Now turn to Isaiah 47 just a minute. One scripture there. Isaiah 47. Now, she's called the queen of heaven in Jeremiah. Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against power, uh, from, excuse me, principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, and wicked spirits where? High places are heavenly places. And she's the queen of heaven. Now, in Revelation 18, she's called a queen. Now, in Isaiah 47... Look in verse 10. Here's this Jezebel spirit. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, God tells her. And you know, she set up men of Belial to kill Naboth, Jezebel did. And Belial means sons of, 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 of the devil are wicked ones. And God said, you have trusted in your wickedness. And thou hast said, now here's what she says, none seeth. Me. She hides. Jezebel hides. She said, none sees me. But how many know the Holy Ghost can discern her out and find her out? And God said, thy wisdom and thy knowledge it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. Hallelujah. How many know that's pride? How many know we all need to repent of pride? <laughs> Turn back to Kings now. Turn back to Kings. Jezebel is after the prophets. She killed the prophets of God. 
She was after Elijah. How many know Elijah? I call it the road of depression because that's what he was on when she come at him. Now, you know why Elijah ran from Jezebel? How many know we've all ran from something? Maybe you have, but I have. But the reason Elijah ran from Jezebel was that he did not have a rhema word. But when he got the rhema word, when he was hiding, how many know he come right back? But he hadn't heard from God. But when he heard from God, brother, I want to tell you, he made tracks and returned. Praise the Lord. And so here in the book of Kings, second chapter, and I said this, and I want to say it again. Elijah was in the days of Ahab and Jezebel, the bee system, the harlot system. We said the other night, the other day, there was a, a famine of three and a half years. Elijah brought it on the land. And I believe tribulations coming upon the land three and a half years to majority of the church in the day of the beast system and the harlot system. And God's raising up an Elijah people, a double portion ministry, the same spirit that was on Elijah. How many know he, by that he turned the people back to the heart of God in repentance? It was upon John the Baptist. He turned the, he prepared the way of the Lord and brought repentance to the people. And I believe the same spirit that was upon Elijah and John is coming upon his people in this hour. Amen? And they're going to preach the kingdom and preach repentance and turn people back to God. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? But this same Elijah prophesied the death, the, the doom, the demise, and destruction of Ahab and Jezebel. And how many know God fulfilled it? And this Elijah ministry that God's raising up, I believe again, will do the same. They will prophesy the death, the doom, the demise, and destruction Oh, they had the beast system and Jezebel. Amen? But how many know Elijah was taken up? He was called up, wasn't he? Hallelujah. Chapter 2 in 2 Kings, verse 1. I'm not going to go in lengthy on this, just a few things, and I'm, then I'm going to close. It came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. I mean, old Gilgal is the place of the circle. I mean, oh, we go in circles too, once in a while. Gilgal was a place of circumcision. It's where it, uh, God's people were circumcised a second time under Joshua, there in Joshua chapter 5. Remember that? Hallelujah. There was circumcision in chapter 5 of Joshua. There was the new diet in chapter 5. They, the, 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 court, the old court of the land, man had ceased. God never exposes you to the new until the old passes away. And when they crossed Jordan, how many of them had ceased? And they, the old court of the land, which is a mature word to us. And then also he saw the captain of the Lord's host in chapter 5, and he worshipped him. There was circumcision, a new diet. And there was worship. Praise the Lord. Now, note your phone down. Here in Gilgal, I said, it's the place of circumcision. Now, hear me. Just because we have been circumcised in heart, is no sign we'll inherit the promises. Look back in Jude just a minute. Five. How many know that you've got three choices in the wilderness? You know that? Hallelujah. I don't know if I can remember them or not. There are three choices in the wilderness. There are two of them especially. Your bones can bleach. How I many you know that? With the promises of God in your hand and heart. Or you can stand and enter. Or you can go down the mountain. Now here in Jude 5. Now listen to what God says, brethren. I will therefore put you in remembrance... Though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the world, out of Egypt, afterward did something, destroyed them that what? Believe not. That was, they, lay, they laid their physical life down there in the wilderness. Amen? They did not enter into Canaan's land because of unbelief. How many allowed to keep us out too? Praise the Lord. Now, we know in circumcision, 
We know it, it happened on the eighth day when, after the child was born, back in Israel. I mean, the eighth day speaks of resurrection life and new beginnings. Amen? Now, the older you were, hear me now, the older you were, like in Joshua 5, that was a young generation, but they were older than eight days old. But the older you were, the more flesh had to be cut away. And there was more pain. It took longer to heal. And it took, you know, getting for all and whatever they used back then into the womb. The older you are, the more flesh must be cut away. Amen? Who did the circumcision? It was Joshua, type of Jesus. Amen? Now, look here in verse 1. He's following Elijah. Elijah is from Gilgal. Verse 2. Elijah said to Elisha, Tear here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. We know Bethel speaks of the house of God. Amen? And how many know here in Bethel there were prophets knew what was going to happen to Elijah? In verse uh, 3, they said to him, Knowest thou not that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace or shut your mouth. So there were prophets in the house of God at Bethel that was telling Elisha that the Lord was going to take him away from him. Praise the Lord. I believe in Bethel. I believe in the house of God. Don't you? Hallelujah. But how many know we can get sidetracked by revelations? Elisha could have stayed there and got sidetracked, but he kept on moving with Elijah. Didn't he? There was a course set out for him to follow. Praise the Lord. How many know he was being tested here by the prophet? Sure was. Now, Bethel, it's important that we have a place where God has put us. And we must know that place. You cannot... You do not have the right, I don't have the right to go any uh, place and say, I'm just going to join this place. We must be placed and sent in by God in our local groups. By the Holy Ghost. Amen? Hallelujah. And in the local church, it speaks of a covenant relationship, not with the Lord, but, but with each other. But hear me now. You cannot camp, even in Bethel, where there is no vision... And no revelation to cross Jordan and go the other side. How I many know there's some churches that have no vision at all? But there are, there are churches springing up. There are fellowships springing up. Let me say it that way. That have a vision, we must cross Jordan. Hallelujah. Come into us fullness. I know not, not everybody's going to come in that at once, but there is a people that's destined for that. Can you say amen? I'm not saying that churches aren't important that may not be teaching that. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that we need to be in those groups that are teaching this word, I believe. Praise the Lord. Then he comes down to Jericho. Look in verse 4. Elijah said to him, Elisha, tear here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. This is, Jericho is also a confirming uh, ministry. They also knew that Elijah was going to be taken away. And we know again Jericho is the place where the walls fell, as we mentioned a while ago. How many know that's where the Good Samaritan left Jerusalem for Jericho? Remember that? And he began to go down. He left the presence of God, and he went towards Jericho, fell among thieves. Well, how many know he was wounded and stripped? And a Levite and a priest came by, and neither one had anything to do with him. That's the ministry, and that's the congregation. But there was a Good Samaritan came, found him, bound up his wounds, and poured it in oil, which is the Holy Ghost. And wine, which is not only the blood, but also joy. And he delivered him to an inn, which is a local church. He left him with the host, which is the apostles, prophets, teachers, shepherds, and evangelists. And he gave him two pence. A penny, or pence, was a day's wage for two days. And he said, if it takes any more, I'll give it to you when I return. Hallelujah. Well, how many know two days has just about went by? He's coming back, isn't he? Amen. So, Jericho is a real place. Now, look here in this verse, uh, chapter. I'm trying to. In chapter 2. <clears throat> oh, wrong chapter. 
chapter 2. Uh, look in verse 5. <clears throat> and the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered and said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said to him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath called me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they two went on. Now look at verse 7. How I many old two can't walk together except to be agreed? Verse 7. And fifty men. Now I said Pentecost men what? Fifty. So here's your Pentecostal. Here's your Charismatics. Here's your two thirds gospel. We thank God for those people. Amen. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view where? And they too stood by Jordan. Now the fifty were on the this side of Jordan, where Elijah and Elisha is going to go across. Now, this side of Jordan speaks of the holy place. Doesn't it? You know your Bible. Fifty could see what was going on. They could preach it. They could prophesy. They could explain it. But they won't pay the price and walk with, we would say, with Jesus and go across Jordan. There's a lot of people see a lot of things, but they refuse to pay the price to march on with God. It's not enough to see it. Moses saw the promised land, didn't he? But Joshua walked in it. Hallelujah. And there are Moses today that see the promised land, but there's some Joshua's that's going to walk in what Moses has seen. Hallelujah. And the eye's not going to say to the foot, I don't need you, brother, that eye has revelation, illumination from God, but that foot's going to have to take you in. Amen. Praise the Lord of the grace of God. Hallelujah. So, these are Pentecostals. How many know it says in Hosea 7, 8, that Ephraim was a cake? He was half done. How many know in the holy place you're half done? <laughs> huh? Half baked. You've got to be flipped. Yummy on one side, gummy on the other. <laughs> I don't like pancakes that way. Praise the Lord. And then, they, <laughs> then they went across Jordan. Now, Jordan means descender, or actually means spreading of judgment. Now, I want you to hear what I'm going to say here now. It speaks of the rending of the veil to us as well. It's out of the holy place into the holy of holies. It's from the sixty to the hundred fold. It is a baptism as a on a fire. Baptism in the sea, in the cloud, now in Jordan. And how many know when Israel crossed Jordan, it was, there was a, it was a helpless, hopeless situation. In the natural, the Jordan had flooded. And there was no way you can go across in the natural except God intervened. How many ever felt you were there? <laughs> and I can hear the carnal mind saying, we're going to build some boats and go. <laughs> <laughs> No, it won't work. <laughs> but they, <laughs> oh, hallelujah. But they had to come up to that Jordan camp right there for three days, looking at a helpless, hopeless situation, and then God intervened. Hallelujah. I tell you, we're approaching the third day, brother. God will intervene. But how many know across Jordan, as Jack said yesterday, you've got to follow that ark. Your eyes got to be on that ark. Amen? Amen. And number two, you got to be 2,000 cubits behind that ark. How many know we're coming 2,000 years behind the first one? How many know the ark also meant a coffin? Joseph, the word where he was put in the coffin, that's also the same word for the ark. That was death. But how many know when you cross Jordan, you're crossing death, but you're coming into life, aren't you? Hallelujah. Leave them old bones behind, I guess. <laughs> Whatever. Amen. All right. So it was a helpless, hopeless situation. And yet God intervened and God's people crossed. Now, here, look, look at the verse here now. In chapter 2, with me. It says here in verse 8, 
Elijah took his mantle, wrapped it together, smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. It came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. How many know the double portion was also on Elijah? And now it's coming on Elisha. That's what he's asking for, rather. Notice, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit, Elijah, be upon me. Now, what was the double portion for? To do twice the miracles? No. I'll show in just a minute. He said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me, when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. How many know that Jesus went up, and the man will come down, the Holy Ghost? And Elijah's going to go up, and the man was coming down. Hallelujah. Upon Elisha. But how many know there's coming a separation here between Elijah and Elisha? And you know what's going to separate them? Fire. And we said when you cross Jordan, that speaks of the baptism of fire. Amen? Now, hear me. When they cross Jordan, only it's when Elisha asked Elijah for this double portion. He didn't ask it on this side. It's when they both went across Jordan on the other side into resurrection. Amen? Now, in verse 11, it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of what? fire and horses of fire, and parted them asunder. And Elijah, parted by fire, went up by a whirlwind. I don't understand that. But I believe, believe it would be glorious, don't you? <laughs> and of course, Elisha comes back and goes across the Jordan and so forth, and I won't go into all of that. And they would then they go, they're going to try to bring Elijah back. Hallelujah. Now, Turn to one other scripture in closing, Deuteronomy 21. How many believe Joseph received the double portion ministry? Yeah. A portion above his brethren? How many know that Joseph was a, the firstborn of the two? He had a, his full brother was Benjamin. He had a lot of half-brothers. But of his real mother, he was the firstborn. But how many know that Joseph was hated by his half-brethren? Now, in Deuteronomy 21, the last scripture I want to give you, verse 15 through 17. If a man have two wives, or one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn, but he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for what? He shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn. How many know Jesus was the son of the hated? Of the, he was the firstborn. By giving him something, a double portion of all that he hath, for he is the beginning of his strength, the right of the firstborn is his. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Elisha wanted the rights of the firstborn when he asked for the double portion. And I believe God is raising a people up that will have the right of the firstborn. Hallelujah. The people that will cross over and yet return and minister life. Anybody want that? Hallelujah. Jesus said, only few, Jesus said, only few will enter that life. And I believe he was, he was speaking of the fullness of that life. And I believe we have to press, we have to be violent in the spirit. We have to have a hunger and a thirst to enter what we're talking about today. It will not come just because we hear this message. It comes by seeking God and loving the Lord. Amen? Let's stand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, again today we thank you that there is a people, Lord, destined.
to minister, Lord God, on that side of the veil and this side of the veil. Lord, we thank you for heaven today. We believe heaven's a real place, Lord. And Lord, I believe that there are many things uh, in, that, uh, in that realm, Lord, that we are yet to explore and know about as well as here. And we thank you, Lord, there is a people pressing towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And God, I pray today that this will be the desire of everyone in this room to enter into that higher dimension in God. Father God, make us conscious to be a worshiper, an intercessor, and a praiser. Hallelujah. To set our eyesight upon thee and not upon another. To be drawn unto you. Draw us, O Lord, and we shall run after thee. Hallelujah. Minister life, we pray this day, to the hearts of your people. And again, Lord, I thank you for the food today we're going to eat. I thank you for those that have come to this camp. Lesson, I pray in Jesus' name. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home.